a real pleasure to be here. Now, in the next 20 minutes or so, I would like to talk to you about a, a project, a digital platform that is close to my heart and which I've been working on for nearly a decade, the Brain Data Bank. I will tell you why I'm doing what I'm doing, how it is being done, the steps the team and I are progressing, how we're progressing with these steps, and where are we at right now in terms of the platform readiness. I will also share with you my vision on human brain data and how we can help fight back at the growing mental health crisis. Now, before I do that, I would like to quickly give you my perspective on digitization. Uh, a term that is much talked about these days and, in my view, is often mischaracterized. Now, the meaning of digitization has evolved over the last few decades, as we know. Digitization, as many still perceive it, is still about market making, digital processes, interactions, and transactions. It's about communication and applications from enterprise resource planning systems to business workflow tools to other commerce and other transactions. Now, we know that organizations who digitize those areas of business in time have kept up with their sector times. And the ones who struggle to transform are either still struggling today or have gone out of business. So I would therefore argue that digitizing these areas does not now give an organization a competitive advantage. It is a survival tool, a necessity. So in this context, what is it that gives an organization a competitive advantage, and where is the big value in digitization today? The big value today, as we know, is not in communication and in applications. The big value is in owning and monetizing digital assets. Now, if we were to exclude the media and technology sectors, studies show all other sectors have not realized their full digital asset potential. And that includes the telecom sector as well. The good news is now there's more and more organizations that are looking into exploring their big data and the potential of its asset value. Why now? Historically, the software and hardware that was required to mine such data was expensive and complex. Until recently, analyzing big data required vast computing power, as you know, and uh, scarce skills that are hard to find. So as such, much of that data in many organizations have been largely forgotten. Today, because of cloud processing and computing, computing has become a utility, like electricity and like water. So any organization, large or small, can now afford to take a second look at their digital assets and look for a potential value in that. So turning now to healthcare digitization. In a recent study by Harvard Business School on sector digitization, the health sector was ranked 17 out of 20. That is fourth from the bottom. Shocking. Technology is like water. It moves where it can. And as such, the health sector's high regulatory barriers contributed to making it way back in terms of, way behind in terms of digitization. Now, there are other factors too, I believe. The health sector has traditionally, and across the world, I'm speaking generally here, has been underfunded and often operates in a crisis mode. Now, a new factor here, within the health sector, there has been a surge in mental and neurological conditions in recent decades. Now, this surge has consumed most of its resources, and brain-related conditions and diseases now 
are rising faster than the services can cope with. And that's not just Switzerland, all over. In Europe, brain disorders cost Europe over 700 billion euros every year and represents 35% of Europe's total disease burden. Here in Switzerland, there are over 2 million people suffering from a brain disorder of some kind. That's over 25% of the population. The annual assessment and treatment cost for the health services for these disorders is close to 20 billion Swiss francs. Now, looking broadly at the health sector in Switzerland, according to Credit Suisse research, healthcare costs in Switzerland are expected to rise in the next two decades by 50%. That's a 3% year-on-year increase almost. Economists here are also predicting that an additional 185,000 full-time jobs will be required to cover the health services demands over the next 20 years, by the year 2040. So that, again, is a 50% rise on the existing 360,000 strong healthcare workforce here. On the funding side, it is equally challenging for the healthcare sector. A significant proportion of planned investments in Swiss hospitals is still not yet being financially secured, apparently. And as things stand today, only around a quarter of hospitals here in Switzerland are self-sustainable. Now, let's think for the moment that we have a financial services sector that is as poorly digitized, and I'm not talking in Switzerland, across the world, as the health care sector is. Where would the world economies be today? How would our financial transactions be handled? From trading, to banking, to risk analysis. Now, if we imagine, if we can digitize the health services sector, at the same level of sophistication as the financial services. How will this impact our lives and our families' lives? Can our, my generation afford to keep talking about digitizing the health sector and failing to deliver? Now, turning to the Brain Data Bank, which is the subject or the, the key part of my talk. Why do we need a human brain data bank? Many of you know that most brain disorders are still not fully understood. The human brain is a vast frontier that researchers are just beginning to unlock. And such exploration is key to unlocking a new generation of treatment for both mental conditions and neurological diseases. Now, improving diagnosis and treatment require new discoveries in research. And good research projects require reliable and accessible data. Now, brain data is big data and it's hard to find. The outcome today is that across the globe, patients and other stakeholders are not being given 21st century solutions when it comes to healthcare and, in particular, brain related conditions. And this has produced, as we saw earlier in the figures I mentioned, a negative impact on cost, productivity in this sector, and above all, patient care. And it affects all of us. We are all stakeholders when it comes to the brain. We all have one. Now, in the last decade or so, I met some of the most brilliant professionals working on human brain research and treatment. If we give these professionals the right tools, I'm convinced that we will transform our understanding of the human brain and in doing so, affect the lives of millions of sufferers. Today, the organ that we understand least on is the brain. It is immensely more complex than all other organs. Only recently, 
tools have allowed scientists to explore it in detail, but we still do not understand how it works beyond its basic functions. We have a theory for the universe, but we do not have today a theory for the brain. And in the last 30 years, space research has advanced in leaps when compared to brain research. Now, one significant difference between these two areas of complex science is that space research data is shared even amongst rival nations, while human brain data is not. My goal from deploying this platform is to help accelerate scientific progress in our understanding of the human brain, in the treatment of brain-related conditions, and in helping find new preventative ways to slow down this alarming rise in mental health conditions all over the world. Today, most human brain research is done on mice. And that is because we do not have a reliable repository of cases and diseases that researchers and physicians can tap into and learn from. So, we turn to analyzing rodent brains instead. And whilst thanks to dedicated scientists, and despite the complexity, we were able to uncover a lot of knowledge this way, it is still far from ideal to rely primarily on this form of research for all the obvious reasons. Now, it reminds me of this funny story that I will share with you. A policeman one night saw a man under a street light on his hands and knees. So he came over and said, what are you doing? He said, I lost my keys over there. And he pointed to a dark area on the street. So the officer puzzled. He said to him, well, if you've lost your keys over there, why are you looking for them here? And the man said, because that's where the light is. <laughs> so when it comes to human brain discoveries, we need to shine the light on where the problem is when it comes to treating if we are going to try and uh, understand the diseases we have today. We at Neuropro are helping do that by making brain data accessible in an anonymized, secure, objective, consistent, complete, comparable, relevant, and timely manner. Our mission is to help hospitals working on brain-related diseases to anonymize, secure and organize brain data assets and make these assets accessible globally for research and diagnosis. Now, the Brain Data Bank is an aggregator. It's enabling the licensing of verified, well-documented brain cases of anonymized patients to organizations and institutions. The type of data that we're holding today is uh, MRI, EEG, CT scan, video, and other types of data, all big data. Now, in essence, this plot platform connects a two-sided market. On the supply side, medical institutions, the providers of data, upload their cases or deposit these cases, as one says. And on the demand side, institutions register to view, browse, process or download deposited cases. We also plan to provide the total deployment solution, legal compliance, digital assessment, asset due diligence, software platform, migration tools, and most importantly, the funding and training needed to help Swiss hospitals join. Once they've joined, we manage this data using our own platform, in-house developed, with advanced front-end uh, desktop and mobile interfaces. We make it accessible and monetizable and provide hospitals with a new form of income. We, from our side, recover our costs once the hospitals start to generate revenue. Now, the hospitals we are targeting in Switzerland 
have valuable brain data that once anonymized can be quickly turned into assets generating millions of francs of income annually to offset their costs and improve patients' care. It's worth noting here that brain data does not have an expiry date, so it doesn't decrease in value over time. Now, I see all stakeholders as winners from this platform. Those on the supply side here in Switzerland, and those on the demand side here and all over elsewhere. On the human side, I have not a shred of doubt that such initiative will most certainly, certainly accelerate research and help improve brain-related disease treatment. If data is the oil of the 21st century, as it's often being said these days, then I think brain data must rank as its finest crude. Consider for a moment a global pharmaceutical company working, say, on dementia. And they learn that they can have, with great ease, access to large volume of well-documented dementia cases. Can they afford to ignore it? I very much doubt it. Will such data add value to the research? I very much think so. Brain data is high in demand, with the biggest winners from making this data available is the patients today that are suffering from mental and neurological conditions. Now, we are targeting 80 hospitals out of the 300 or so hospitals here in Switzerland. And these hospitals specialize in neurological disorders and uh, brain diseases. And for the last two years, we have been trialing our platform of one of these leading hospitals. We've listened carefully to their comments and their feedback and built all the necessary enhancements and safeguards. A significant time we spent was on anonymization and security to ensure that the high regulatory and ethical compliances here are fully met. We are now aiming to launch our platform in the fourth quarter of this year. Now, if we look at the telecom sector in this context, and according to the World Economic Forum, and I quote, the telecommunication industry have traditionally been quick to recognize the opportunity that digital services represent, but they haven't been able to capture significant value at the scale and speed of digital disruptors." End quote. If this is true, it may be due, looking as an outsider of this industry, may be due to the fact that this industry is still being perceived as a utility. And this perception is changing, as we know, as more of the telecom companies now are engaged in adding uh, value-added services to their offerings. Now, the health sector has tremendous opportunities. And in this regard, I invite you to help turn the spotlight stronger in Switzerland on health sector digitization. So, to end, we must find ways for technology to provide vastly lower cost health solutions to vastly more people. And I truly believe only when we find the courage to tackle health sector digitization head on, we can see this happening. Thank you so much. Thank you.